Alhamdulillah, you all have done good in muscular skeleton, so that's why you all are promoted to your next year. Okay? So as you have started endocrine and reproductive block, so I'm starting the gland which we are going to discuss in this week is pituitary gland. Okay? This pituitary gland is also called a master gland. Why it's called master gland? Because it has to control the activities of others in endocrine gland. Okay? So, you have done histology of pituitary gland yesterday. Yes. Okay? So, we will not touch the cellular point of endocrine pituitary, but we will discuss about the gross anatomy of pituitary gland. Okay? Now, pituitary gland is basically lying in the cranial cavity. Okay? Where we find this gland? In the cranial cavity. This cavity in the skull is called cranial cavity. Okay? This whole cavity is called cranial cavity. Brain is accommodated over here along with its membranes. And these membranes are called meninges. This cranial cavity is divided into three parts. The anterior depression or fossa, middle depression or fossa and the posterior. Okay? So this is called because anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, posterior cranial fossa. How many fossa? Three. Posterior, middle and anterior. The middle cranial fossa is mainly made up of a bone which is called a sphenoid bone. Which bone? Sphenoid. A sphenoid bone. A sphenoid bone has two parts. These two are the wings of the sphenoid, like butterfly, okay, center. And this is body. This center one is body, and these are the wings of the sphenoid bone, okay. In this body, there is a depression. In this body, this is the depression, and this depression is called Silla Tersica. What it is called? Silla it is called a Silla Tersica. The word Silla Tersica means ter saddle of a Turkish horse. Saddle of a Turkish horse. Okay, that means this is resembling, this is resembling to the seat where usually the horse rider sit on the horse. Okay, if you see this is horse, the seat which is on the horse which the rider sits it is called as saddle. So Turkish horse saddle, this area resembles to that, so they are named as Silla Tersica. But the anatomical name of this area, because it accommodates, it accommodates the pituitary gland, which is called as a fossa, depression in a bone is called fossa. So this is called hypophyseal fossa or pituitary fossa. What it is called? Hypophyseal fossa. In the cellular Yes. Inside? It is in the body of sphenoid bone. What it is? You can see the depression in the bone. Okay? There is this depression. In the bone, this depression is called Silla Tersica. This fossa is called Hypophyseal fossa. What it is called? Hypophyseal fossa. In this model, you can see this depression. Can you see this depression? Yes. Sir. My finger is pointing out this depression. This is called hypophyseal fossa or cella tersica. Okay, this portion. Now, coming towards the anatomy, but before going, what you are looking at these pictures? What you see in this picture? Parent and children. Hmm? Parent and children? Disabled children. Are these parents of these children? Yes. No. <laughs> Maybe some chromosomal abnormalities. Huh? Or uh, mismanaged in a <laughs> test tube. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> these are with the endocrine dysfunction. These all are with endocrine dysfunction. You can see the ages according to the face. 
but their height and stature of the body is not normal. Okay, so endocrine function control all the growth activities of the body either in the body form or either in the reproductive form. Okay, so this <coughs> picture is just to show you that endocrine is very important part of our body. We can compare it with the nervous system. Okay, nervous system also controls our body. And endocrine also no. controls, Balance. but Hormonal. for the growth and other changes in the body. Okay, so here you can see the form of information in the nervous system is through nerve the impulse. nerve impulse. And here involves the hormones which are traveled in the blood. Then pathway are the impulses and hormones are transported through blood. blood. Speed of information nervous system quick and here slow, long and slowly gradually in the endocrine system. Duration of effect response are short lived okay. As you have touched a hot surface you just take off your hand from there. This is a short but response in the hormonal system is short lived or long lived. Suppose we are taking something and GIT local hormone will act locally and they complete the digestion okay but prolonged as growth hormone or other hormones of the body which maintain our blood pressure which maintain our sexual characteristics they are prolonged and slowly and growing quality of action nervous system voluntary or involuntary I want to walk or I don't want to run or I want to sit this is in our country but hormonal no control Target area usually localized and affect the hormone long target area in the endocrine system. Here you can see a normal growth of and the same age growth. Okay? Same age growth because the deficiency of growth hormone. Okay? Here you can see a mother with short stature or any abnormality during development of thyroid hormone or any other hormone which causes this and you can see the bony development of this lady the kids are also suffering from the same second abnormalities of the hormones you can see the tall man acromegaly this condition is called in which growth hormone increase and person is going to increase in height and all body area and you can see a normal here you can see a kid is uh, looking at the tall person so this is how the disturbance of endocrine system cause different diseases and definitely in this uh, block you will learn these diseases so it is also called as a master gland of endocrine gland and it hormones secreted by this gland affect all other endocrine glands and throughout the body. It lies in <coughs> hypophyseal fossa, cilia tersica of pituitary fossa. Now fossa, this depression fossa, it is roofed by, it is roofed by the dura matter of brain, which is covering of the brain, called as dura matter. So dura matter will come and cover this fossa and form a diaphragmatic diaphragm like surface diaphragm is a partition between abdomen so same it forms a cover if this is cilia tersica okay so the dura matter covers over here because here brain lies so this cover is called diaphragmic cellae okay Cilla tersica having a diaphragm over it by the made up of dura matter of brain covering it's called diaphragmatic cellae which is a dura matter fold okay there is a small hole inside this diaphragmatic here lies the pituitary gland okay here lies the pituitary gland but pituitary gland is attached to the hypothalamus of brain okay through a connecting stalk. So that connecting stalk passes from a hole in the diaphragmatic cell. 
okay the diaphragmatic celly which is formed by dura mater having a hole from that hole a connecting stalk is attaching the pituitary gland with the hypothalamus of brain clear so the stalk of the gland pierces the diaphragmatic celly and attach above to the hypothalamus that means this pituitary gland has connection with hypothalamus okay so for that purpose we have to study that how it is going to develop okay what are the sources of the development of this gland and we all know that gland they produced by the proliferation of epithelial cells epithelial cells when they come to form a gland they shed off from that layer and form their group of cells here you can see a diagrammatic view this is the sphenoid bone body cilia tersica pituitary gland and attached to the brain hypothalamus okay so this is the location of pituitary gland here you can see in this model the number 11 structure number 11 pink color dot can you see this pink dot number 11 okay number 11 a pink dot you can see the models if you have the models nearby you so here you can see number 11 structure is a small pink dot like area and that is pituitary gland a small area pituitary gland okay <coughs> so pituitary gland is entirely ectodermal in origin which germinal layer okay. ectoderm okay but having two parts one from the neuro ectoderm if you remember the neural tube formation yes okay and the neural tube is formed by the neural ectoderm okay so first the anterior part of neural tube gave invagination downward called as neurohypophysis neurohypophysis okay and from the oral cavity which is for will form oral cavity called as stomodium it gives a upward invagination upward projection and that is called as a pouch rathkis pouch what it is name so downward rathkis pouch from above the downward displacement of the neuro ectoderm as a infundibulum when they come close they will form the pituitary gland okay the pituitary gland is entirely ectodermal in origin composed of two functional distinct structure that differ in embryological development and anatomy and they are adeno hypophysis and no. neuro the name indicate endeno hypophysis that means glandular part of pituitary gland neuro hypophysis means no. nervous part of pituitary gland okay and the adeno hypophysis which is the glandular is anterior part of the gland which called as anterior pituitary and the nervous is posterior part we called as as posterior pituitary gland clear so pituitary gland is now divided into how many parts two, two. anterior and anterior. the most important is anterior. anterior very good anterior one because anterior. it will secrete so many hormones or controlling factor which go to the target other endocrine gland the adeno hypophysis develops from rathkis pouch which is a upward invagination of oral ectoderm from the roof of the stomodium stomodium is the part which will form mouth. mouth in future the neuro hypophysis develops from the infundibulum which is a downward extension of neural ectoderm from the floor of the diencephalon which is the developing brain the oral ectoderm and neural ectoderm form the pituitary now the diagrammatic way you can see <coughs> this is neural tube and this is the future oral cavity this is stomodium you can see this is downward projection of or called as infundibulum and this pink color upward <coughs> projection is called rathkis pouch they both will combine meet and form here you can see 
slowly and gradually in the fundibulum and Rathke's pouch is going. In this second diagram you can see they are going and meeting together and they they shed off from their layer except the neurohypophysis which continue in the connection and here you can see the pituitary gland anterior and this is called posterior pituitary gland. Clear? How this is going to be formed. So these two number one anterior will be glandular other will be neural part of the pituitary gland. Okay, now the first anterior pituitary, which is also called as adenohypophysis. Adenohypophysis. Anterior having three lobes. Okay, roughly according to the structure, we divided it into three parts anterior lobe, intermediate lobe, and tubular lobe. This is called only because of the position it takes position it takes. The most anterior lobe, this is the largest part of the gland. This is the largest part of the, what are the other names of it? Parsitalis. Pars anterior or pars glandulus. This is the most important part. This is, so anterior pituitary makes 85% of pituitary gland. Anterior pituitary roughly makes 85% of pituitary gland remaining how many part? 15% is neurohypophysis. Clear? So intermediate, which is called pars intermedia, this is in the form of thin strip which is separated from anterior lobe by an intraglandular cleft, a remnant of Rathke's pouch. If we go back to this diagram, this is Rathke's pouch going over. This is the intermediate lobe, which separate anterior with the posterior, and this is what remnant of Rathke's pouch. Pouch uh, process. The tubular lobe, the extension of Rathke's pouch, which is going to surround the infundibulum, which is coming from the mm -hmm. stalk. That portion or connecting stalk, that portion is called pars tubularis. It is the upward extension of the anterior lobe that surrounds and forms the part of <coughs> infundibulum. Again, if we go back to this diagram, the part of pouch which surrounds the infundibulum is called pars tuberous. So these are the three parts of anterior pituitary gland. A good diagram, pars distalis, pars intermedia and pars tubularis. And this is posterior, which is connected to the hypothalamus. Clear at this point how many parts, where it is, location, and what are. These are the hormones produced by <coughs> the anterior pituitary growth hormone, prolactin, thyroid stimulating hormone, which goes to thyroid gland to increase, follicle stimulating to the ovaries, luteinizing hormone for the sexual characteristic. Adrenocortical to the adrenal cortex to produce, uh, to control the electrolytes and blood pressure. Endorphin corticotropes, they are going to be. Then the neurohypophysis, the second part. Neurohypophysis. Actually, neurohypophysis is connected through the hypothalamus through two nuclei supra optic and paraventric and produce two good hormones. ADH, oxytocin. ADH and oxytocin, okay? Neuroapos is not a glandular and does not synthesize hormone. Instead, it is a site where exon project from neuronal cell bodies in supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei of hypothalamus. Part, it is roughly divided into part and that is posterior lobe Neural lobe or pars posterior is smaller, lies in the posterior concavity of the anterior lobe. When anterior lobe of the pituitary posteriorly having a concavity, this portion is fixed into that particular portion. Because when development occurs, this portion is going to cover the uh, infundibulum. So portion which fix beside the anterior gland, that portion is called as posterior lobe and 
This portion is infundible. This is the posterior lobe. This portion is called as the infundibular part. And median eminence of the tuber cerebrum, which is continuous with the infundibular stem. If you see, this is the median eminence. This area is called as the median eminence, infundibular and posterior lobe. This is how the posterior pituitary is going. Here you can see the neuronal connection in the posterior part. These are supraoptic nucleus and paraventricular nucleus. Hypothalamus also secretes up inhibitory and releasing, releasing hormone which are carried through these blood. nerves towards the anterior pituitary through the blood. Through the blood. 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 Because there are there is a portal system we will discuss over here the how they will reach to the anterior pituitary. So hormones are oxytocin and vasopressin of the posterior pituitary. So in a fully developed <coughs> pituitary gland it is a small pea sized shape oval measuring 18 millimeter anterior posterior and 12 millimeter transpersonal. 18? Yes. So 8. 8. 8 millimeter and 12 and approximately 500 micrograms. Okay? Approximately micrograms, not grams. Okay? Not Yesterday gram. we discussed, so it's a grams, that means half a kg. Oh no, it's microgram. Okay? And the adenohypophysic consists roughly about 80 to 85 percent of the pituitary which manufacture the hormones. The important part in anatomy relations. Okay? So pituitary gland having some important relation, your all MCQs depend on this regarding the relations. So this is a, the larger or a big model of a brain and you can see this small portion is pituitary. Okay, what is this? Pituitary gland. This is the upside down model. Okay. So pituitary gland lies over here. Look at this model. Pituitary gland is like that means whatever above is the superior relation, whatever below is the inferior relation, and there are lateral relation which are lying on the lateral side of Silla Tersica. Okay? Lateral relation, superior relation, and where it is lying are the inferior relation. So it will be easy to remember. What is structure is forming roof of Silla Tersica? Diaphragm. 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 What is the name? Diaphragm cella. Diaphragm cella. Formed by the dura mentor. But the name is? Okay. Then there is an important structure which lie over it. It is called optic chiasma. What is optic chiasma? The right optic nerve and the left optic nerve. When they are going from the visual field, they cross over and then go to the brain. The crossing of these fibers, they are called optic yes. chiasma. Here you can see this optic chiasma yellow color area. This yellow color area is optic chiasma. This yellow color area is optic chiasma. Yes? It is above the cella, the diaphragmatic cell. It is above the diaphragmatic cell. Suppose if I am putting the marker, can you see the marker is over the diaphragm? Yes. This is the area where the optic chiasma is lying. This is the area where optic chiasma is lying. The marker area is the optic chiasma which is above the pituitary gland. Okay? And infundibular recess of the third ventricle. What are ventricles? Ventricles are the space filled with CSF. CSF. In the brain, the space filled with CSF are called ventricles. So third ventricle is also present at that level. So how many structure? Three. Diaphragmatic cellae, optic chiasma. optic chiasma, the most important one, okay? Which one of the following 
related superior to the pituitary yes, gland. Yes, so yes. all these names take will be clear. And the infundibular recess of third vagina. Now come to the inferior cilia tarsica, where it is lying. Okay, and that is the body of the sphenoid, sphenoid bone. bone. Is sphenoid air sinus. Can you see this depression or this area? Yes. Can you see this depression or area? Yes. This one. My finger pointing out. This is air sinus. Present in sphenoid bone, so name is sphenoid air sinus. These are the paranasal sinuses present in our different bones. One is maxillary sinus, present in maxilla, frontal, then there are ethmoidal and sphenoidal and maxillary air sinus. What they do? They have air cells present in it. Okay? They are just making the weight of the brain and skull lighter. Okay? A football full of air. If you give pressure into the water, it will come out. Because it becomes lighter. So Allah subhanahu gave us these air spaces. If I put this skull on my head, I will feel the weight. Yes. Definitely the brain, which is roughly about uh, grams, more than 1000 grams. Okay? So we can feel the, but we are not feeling the uh, weight of these structures. Either skull, either these air cells are maintaining. Okay? But there, when there is a virus which go through the nose, through the paranasal sinus, we call that condition sinusitis. Mm. And the condition appear rhinitis, runny nose. What happened? These air cells become inflamed and start produce fluid. Start producing fluid. Yeah. And that fluid is coming because these all air sinuses are related to the nose, opening in the nose and they just uh, continue to produce more fluid and they come through the nose. nose. And at that time your voice changes yes. because it also produces resonance the white. And you feel headache yes. at that time. Heaviness. Clear? Heaviness and headache. So this is all because of the sinus. So inferiorly which sinus is there? Air sinus. The sphenoid air sinus. Scylla tersica. In the brain, there are no such uh, veins large, there are sinuses, venous sinuses, not air sinuses, but venous sinuses. They are lying between the meninges or the covering. So there are two venous, important venous sinus, cavernous sinus present on right and left side of the pituitary gland and other sinus and they communicate with each other, okay, roughly communicate. So irregular venous channels between two layers of dura matter lying in the floor of the fossa. Lying in the floor, floor of the fossa and sphenoid air sinus. These three structures are important inferiorly. So superiorly, diaphragmatic celling, optic chiasma, optic chiasma in front of the third ventricle. Below, scylla tersica, sphenoid air, air sinus and roughly channels of the venous, venous sinuses. sinuses. Now the important, yes? Can you please show us the third ventricle? Third ventricle. You can see from here in the both brain, both sides, there are lateral ventricles. Lateral ventricles are connected through third ventricle, this pink area. You can see this uh, violet area. Then this connecting, there here lies the fourth ventricle. You can see this fourth ventricle, this is third ventricle and lateral ventricle will be in the right and left hemisphere. hemisphere. And this, after that continue in the spinal canal, spinal cord where this uh, CSF goes on. Okay? Now the important relation is the lateral relation. Lateral relation is the cavernous sinus. Mm -hmm. This is the large venous channel present in the lateral side of a pituitary gland over here where my fingers are pointing here it lies okay lateral to the scylla tersica lateral to scylla i'll show you the diagram 
it's not only cavernous sinus. There are some structure running through the sinus and going in the different part of the brain and eye. Going different part of brain and eye. So those structure will automatically come in the lateral relation of lateral relation of pituitary gland. Cavernous sinus along with its contents. And what are those contents? These contents are basically for the eye wall. Nerves which are going towards the eyeball. The main important nerve is oculomotor nerve which controls the movement of the muscle of eyeball. Another nerve which control only one muscle of the eyeball, lateral rectus, abducent nerve. It also cross from there. One more nerve which control one muscle of the eyeball, supra, uh, superior oblique, called as trochlear nerve. So three nerves, oculomotor of the eye, abducent nerve Tro and trochlear. These all are the cranial nerves. They run through this cavernous sinus to reach eyeball. To reach eyeball. Then there are two more nerves. One is ophthalmic division of trigeminal, also going towards the eye. Ophthalmic. Ophthalmic word is for the eye. Ophthalmic division of trigeminal. And maxillary branch of trigeminal. The all nerves are running in the cavern. And the internal carotid artery also pours through the sinus medial to these nerves. Medial to the nerve. Look at this diagram. What is this? Sphenoid sinus. sinus. This is cilla tersica. This is pituitary. So inferiorly, cilla tersica, mm. sinus, and irregular <coughs> channel connecting the sinuses. Superiorly, optic chiasma. Diaphragm cella. Floor of the fourth, third ventricle. Mm. Third ventricle. And here this is the diaphragmatic cell. Okay, so three structure. Now lateral, this blue color hole is cavernous sinus. This is internal carotid artery. Medial to the nerves. Lateral to the pituitary gland. But these all structure are lateral. So here from here Crying. nerve started. Oculomotor, trochlear, abducent. Mm, ophthalmic division and the axillary division of trigeminal. So important is the lateral relation in any point of view in the uh, MCQs and also. The lastly, blood supply. Lastly, the blood supply. From where does the carotid artery, which is on the lateral side, it gives branches to superior hypophyseal artery Inferior. and Inferior. that is going to supply the pituitary gland. So adenohypophysis, which is the anterior pituitary, receives majority of its blood supply from paired superior hypophyseal arteries, which arise from the medial aspect of internal canal. And neurohypophysis supplied by inferior hypophyseal artery. The vessels are terminal branches of the meningohypophyseal trunk of internal carotid artery. Now here, they are going to form you can see the superior hypophyseal artery paired give branches and they mainly supply the lower part of the hypothalamus connecting stalk upper and lower part okay and then give larger branches which runs towards the anterior pituitary okay but here in this portion where the <coughs> hormones coming from the hypothalamus they form first tuft of capillaries. <coughs> Here they get information from hypothalamus, inhibitory and excitatory factors. Then these veins will, uh, arteries will carry out those hormones to form second capillary network in the anterior pituitary to order the cells of pituitary to produce more hormone or releasing factor. This is Inferior hypophyseal artery going towards the posterior pituitary, but give branches to anastomose with the superior hypophyseal arteries. And here you can see the first tuft of capillaries, and these are the second. That's why it is called as pituitary hypophyseal portal Circulation. system. Portal. What is portal system? Whenever there is a flow of blood, 
Having two capillary beds, it is called a portal system. How many portal system in the body? Two. Three. 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 But in the portal system, when artery divides into capillary, then again artery divides into capillary, and then veins. What about if it's a vein between the two capillaries? There is no vein because the blood circulating is the arterial blood. But mm -hmm. it is again going to form the other capillary network. It's, it's veins. Yeah. yeah. But it shows the drainage. Mm -hmm. It is showing the drainage. But first, if you see, the first capillary network and other in the same organ. That's why it is called as portal system. The second capillary network, when the tuft of glomerulus in the Bowman's capsule, again arteries go on and form another tuft along the tubules. Okay? And same in the liver, the first goes into uh, the TIT and then again vein going to drain and again form and then through the portal vein into the inferior vena cava or hepatic vein into inferior vena cava. So this is how the hormones go and take. Thank you. The hypophysial portal system vein drains the primary capillary pluxes formed by the superior hypophysial which deliver blood to the pars distalis and the pars distalis in turn houses the secondary pluxes. Thus a portal venous system is formed and how it is going to Again, a diagrammatic way to show the difference. So, this is the normal pituitary gland. What happened if a pituitary gland enlarges? Mm, pressure. 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 On the pressure, pressure. Pressure on the structure related. So, which is the most important structure superiorly? Oh, okay. Okay. So, what it will do is disturb the vision. Mm -hmm. I think your PBL is yes, yes, sir. Okay. And on the lateral side, movement of the eyeball, nerves are there carotid artery is there, so they will finally, if it enlarges more in size, it goes towards the cavernous sinus, it goes upward and also it can cause. So here you can see this is optic chiasma and here lies the pituitary gland. Whatever area it involves, the defect in the visual field is chiasma compression for the pituitary tumor by temporal hemianopia normally because the temporal vision is lost in the pituitary when it is going to so again a family with hormonal abnormal okay so normal one now so they are the different people and they are caught in the pit. okay thank you very much any question regarding the pituitary gland so relations are important okay Carotid artery. If we go below this optic chiasma, you can see this is pituitary. And these are the lateral related structure. And lateral related structure, you can see the internal carotid artery and the nerves going towards that. Nerves going towards that. Okay? So this is how the pituitary gland is lying in the fossa. And the are uh, the ethmoidal air sinus, if we go below, these are the sphenoid ears. And these green color are the venous channel of the cavernous sinus. Can we see the hypothalamus? White one, yes, white one, and this portion. This is all hypothalamus. So they have multiple.